Welcome to Tech Brothers with Ahmed. Today we are going to answer this question. What are different types of SSIS configuration available for us to use? So today is the last day of uh, 2014 and uh, till now what versions we have? So we have um, DTS that's, that came in 2000, nobody is using it. So we have SSIS 2005 and SSIS 2008 and SSIS 2008 or 2. So those we can separate them from the current versions. We have SSIS 2012 and SSIS 2014. So in uh, old version, when I say before 2012, in uh, SSIS 2005 and 2008, we had only the package deployment. So the configuration was different. Now, in 2012 and 2014, we have two types of configuration available. We have old way to do it, that was package deployment and configurations attached to that was different. And now also we have a project deployment and configuration is totally different than that. So let me start with the old version, 2005 and 2008 and R2 and then we come to the 2012 and 2014. So in old way, or all the versions of SSI, yes, we had five different types of configuration available to us. That was the XML configuration, that has environmental variable configuration, parent-child um, package configuration, registry configuration, SQL server configuration. So there were different ways we could have save the value of our configuration, such as the connection managers, variables, and uh, uh, other uh, properties uh, we could have configured by using these different wa ways. Now, what are the most important ways to do it? So what we were using, XML file, that was one of the best ways where people were using it. And uh, you have to create the XML file and you have, you know, create your configuration and you can include your configuration manager such as, uh, you know, connection managers, their values, server names, uh, initial catalogs, uh, you can have variables, uh, you know, and uh, you, uh, you can all save all those things uh, in the uh, XML file and then your packages will be used in on different environments you can you know use that file in um, your dev when you move to qa you move the same file to the qa just change your uh, catalog name server name connection manager value whatever and variables according to the environment and uh, then ne next best uh, part uh, what the people were using they were using a lot of people were using sql server integration sql server configuration so what was happening uh, this when you enable the sql server configuration it it is creating a, a table with the uh, four five four columns and it was called ss uh, is uh, uh, configuration table so you could have rename it whatever you want it but uh, that that was the default name so it has values it has properties you know and uh, that, that's how you work and have a um, configured filter so you can give the configuration name and then you can have the value of that so uh, you were saving uh, your connection managers you were saving your server names you were saving your initial catalogs you were saving your variables so all those things uh, the values or properties uh, you were saving in that uh, table and uh, create the table in a dev, SIT, UAT, uh, QA and production and the only thing you need to change the values of those uh, uh, can, uh, you know, filters or connect, uh, connection managers or uh, variables by using this uh, table. But when it comes to environmental variable, th th this is not really best practice and not a whole lot of people were using it because you have to have coordinate with the essays and they have to create a variable for you and save the values and uh, that that's, uh, you know, kind of get tricky for the deployments and all that. So not a whole lot of people were using it. Parent child or parent uh, package configuration that, that's what we use uh, if we have a child packages uh, and we create one variable in parent uh, um, package and then uh, that's that's used in our um, child packages so we can pass the value from parent to the child the registry configuration is the same i will say like environmental variable and uh, not a whole lot of people are using it. it it is not really recommended way to do it i mean it you can do do it and uh, then still you have to you know coordinate with the essays and uh, uh, they, they will be able to make these changes for you so the, the best and easy way where you only have to deal with your um, 
uh, SQL Server uh, administrators, you can have a SQL Server configuration. So with the deployments, when you are deploying your package, asking him to move your package from uh, dev to the QA or production or UAT in uh, even uh, in SSIS database or in the file system, you also give him scripts to run and update the configuration in the table. Uh, what you have on the on those environments. So uh, if somebody asks what you prefer, that's another question people ask you. Do you prefer uh, XML configuration or you prefer SQL Server? So it is more like by choice. But still, like if somebody asks me what I prefer, I will go with SQL Server. Why? When you have XML file, you have to open it. It kind of get uh, tricky. You know, it is a text file. You have to make some changes sometime. You know, it, you have to find it. And in SQL Server, you can always write a query, filter your results, and make the updates. It is easy to update, delete, or insert new records in a table instead of putting in the XML file. Now, let's move to the SSIS 2012 and 2014. So now, with the package deployment, we also have a project deployment. We can keep our packages to the uh, you know, package deployment, the old way we had been doing it, and all these five types of configuration will be available to us. But if we are moving to the project deployment, these uh, configuration options will not be available to us. In case uh, when we are deploying our packages, to the, uh, by using the project deployment in, excuse me, in uh, 2012 or 2014, uh, so the packages will be deployed to the SS uh, uh, IS catalog. So there, there will be a there would be a uh, database created where we can deploy these packages. So parameters are introduced in uh, these versions and uh, we will be using different environments so once we will deploy our packages uh, uh, we can create different environments we can create a, a, let's say sit environment we can create a, a qa environment we can create a S, uh, uat environment we can create production environment in the ssis catalog and then uh, in those uh, environments, uh, we can create the variables and we can pass the values to the parameters. You know, so there are two types of parameter we have here. We have a package level uh, parameter and we have a project level parameters. So we can configure those uh, parameters by using these environmental variables. What we have created in SSIS uh, um, catalog and pa run the packages according to the environment. So by creating this uh, new um, um, framework, uh, SSIS uh, is, has one central repository where you have logging, where, where, where you can you know go ahead and check your log for each of the package executed, where you can go ahead and make your changes for configuration. Before that, logging was separated. Uh, you, we have you know uh, log files. We had uh, you know as a SQL Server logging and uh, all that. Now with the SSIS catalog, we have one central repository where the configuration can be done where logging will be there, we can query this. The versioning is also one important um, feature of this uh, uh, framework that was not available to us anyways. We were using uh, TFS to control the versioning of our SSIS uh, packages. So we were doing check in and check, check out. We still do, but uh, th this is an extra versioning available to us in the repository. So we would know that what version uh, and when we had deployed these packages. So th this is kind of detailed uh, answer. So if somebody asks you what are different type of SSIS configuration, you can start with the two basic parts, old, old style and new style, and tell them tell the detail I have explained uh, in the video. Thanks very much for watching this video, and I will see you in next video.